hottest DJ. The hottest <laughs> DJ. DJ <laughs> Super J. Are you are you ready? Oh yeah. Lens FM 936, your station, your music on a Saturday afternoon, the 4th of July. And yes, it's that time when I introduce you to my guest and a topic for today. According to the World Health Organization, one person dies every 40 seconds from suicide. We cannot wait for someone close to us or someone famous to lose their life because you realize the importance of mental health issues. We need to create continuous awareness for it. <laughs> Depression affects the rich and the poor, black and white, male and female. It recently was highlighted in the media when a Bollywood actor Shushan Singh Rajput committed suicide and previously when Hollywood actor Robin Williams also took his own life. Why must it be in the spotlight only when someone famous goes through depression and commits suicide? They are people like you and I who have uh, also depression or other me mental illnesses uh, that we have been going through. Kyle Mirage is an honor student uh, at the University of Johannesburg and an aspiring brand strategist. Uh, mental health has always played a major role in her life, losing loved ones at a young age, constant struggles at school and living with dyslexia uh, created constant challenges for her. So please do know that she is not a medical expert, but just here to share her experiences and maybe give her some advice on what has helped her and how it may help someone else out there. So with that, I say good afternoon and welcome to Payal Mirage. How are you doing? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm well, and how are you all? All right, you look well and relaxed, so just keep it like that, right? <laughs> Thank not you. To, nothing to be scared of. <laughs> all right, so let's get into it, Payal. So what is mental illness uh, for for those that, that are not so aware of it and that's what we're aiming to do today is let people know about mental illness uh, can you give us some examples beautiful question i think that's a great way to start um so a mental illness disorder it basically affects the mood and the thinking and the behavior of people um mental illness is not something to be ashamed of um and it's it is medically noted so there is a way that you can get help i mean for example if you have like uh, it's basically just like diabetes you go to the doctor to get um you know a solution to it. Um, medical um, mental disorders are results of both genetic and environmental factors. However, there's no genetic switch that can be flipped to discover what mental disorders you have, and that's why it's very difficult to detect it. Um, the types of mental illnesses that you do have is like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, OCD, PTSD, um, eating disorders, a uh, big one is self-harm, and having suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why do you think there's a huge stigma? for people with mental illness? Um, in my opinion, I think that most people who live with a mental illness at some point have been blamed for it, as if, if they control it. And a lot of people then label it as, oh, it's just a phase. Um, they control it if they try it. And, you know, it's that, that type of thing. And then attached to the stigma is that feeling of being ashamed. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that ashamed, you feel like you can't get help. Because it's like, oh, what is this person going to say about me and how I can deal with this? You know, you constantly have those thoughts with yourself. And I think that's kind of where the problem starts because you need to realize it by yourself that you should acknowledge how you feel. And through that, that's how you can help yourself. So I've got a few steps that you can, um, mm -hmm. you know, try and break the stigma. So the step one would be talk about mental health openly. And that's one of the reasons why I became an advocate for it. Mm -hmm. The second would be educate yourself and those around you because we can't be ignorant. I mean, we have 
Google, we have a lot of these platforms that mm -hmm. we can like um, learn more about, and I think that's very important. Um, step three would be conscious about the language that we use. I mean, like it's cultural to say "ah oh, shame" mm -hmm. and you know that type of thing, but we don't realize what's the connotations attached to these words. Um, and the fourth step is to encourage equality between um, physical health and mental health. It needs to be given the same attention. For example, say you have a, a stiff neck and stuff like that. You feeling um, you, you want to get help because it's painful. Mm -hmm. And you go to the doctor, you go mm -hmm. to a bio, whatever it is mm -hmm. to get better. So it's the same with mental health. You can seek help for it. It's not, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth and the final step would be to show compassion and care. Um, I think that's something that needs to be that needs to be based in conversations and all of that. So that's mm -hmm. my five steps of how do we break the stigma. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add something. You know, you know, previously people would think if you're going to a, a shrink, as they call them, or a psychiatrist, that you got to screw loose. <laughs> no, you don't. These people are there to help you and guide you. So seek that medical attention, and they will try to get you on the road. All right. So now tell us, um, how can one deal with mental illness from your perspective? Okay. Like I've mentioned, I'm not a medical profession, but I just have a passion for mental health. I think um, as, a, as like a young 21-year-old, there's a lot happening in the world right now and how we can, how do, like with the pandemic, I mean, there's one of the biggest social movements that just happened, always happening and that needs to have um, advocation for is the Black Lives Matter. And I think we need to just hold up and right now, as like everyone that's listening in, just Ask yourself, where are your thoughts going? And 95% of the time, you, you're thinking about something in the past. Mm -hmm. And your mind focuses or you, tends to focus on the negative things and not really on the positive things of what has happened. I mean, we should be grateful for being here. So to answer that question, um, according to the National Alliance of Mental Health, there are a few tips that you can possibly take to, um, to deal with it. And the first one would be radical acceptance, which is basically accepting this um, from the depths of your soul, your heart, and your mind. This is where the reflection takes place. I mean, you need to realize you can't control everything, but you can control your um, attitude towards it. The second would be deep breathing. Um, sounds like sounds weird, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it really does work. So I call it the five three seven technique, where you um, breathe in for five seconds, mm -hmm. you hold for three, and you breathe out for seven. Mm -hmm. So. I normally like have struggled sleeping at night because it's, it's like you know there's so much going on mm -hmm. and social media just doesn't help that sometimes mm -hmm. so I try this technique and it really does work mm -hmm. um, and the third one would be opposite to emotion thinking so basically act out the opposite of what you're thinking so you it's almost like reverse psychology so for example I have a major assignment due on Monday and I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna do this if this is right you know that type of thing rather change the thinking and be like I know I can do this. Um, it's going to be difficult, but if it's not going to challenge me, it's not going to change me. So it's it's that type of thinking, and I think that is also what helps me in the long run. Um, the next one is quite a, a weird one as well, but it's also quite helpful. And this is step four: it's the five senses. So you're basically acknowledging the five senses of what, uh, like in an environment. For, exa mm -hmm. for example, Your surroundings. Like, yeah. So for example, I give you like like as we're standing sitting here right now, I'm looking. I can see around us what's happening. Um, I can feel myself being on this chair. I can still taste that ginger sweet that I had. I, I'm still feeling a little bit nervous, but I'm, I'm okay. And, you know, if that's how you deal with with. Um Live this. in the present moment. Exactly, because mm -hmm. we tend to focus too much on the past and worry about what's going to be in the future. Yeah. And I think as, as a youth, uh, like I always tease my friends, we've become masters and we have PhDs in overthinking, mm -hmm. that we overthink every single thing Correct. where we yeah. don't need to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just need to be in the moment, enjoy it, because we're grateful to be here right now. Mm -hmm. And that's that's for me. Yeah. Just on that, like, if you need to go to the shop down the road, people will work out three different ways to get there <laughs> just to so that yeah. the virus doesn't get them yeah. or something, you know. So, yeah, just act uh, for the moment. <laughs> so, uh, people, all, uh, people's stories always inspire you. Uh, would you like to share your story to inspire others? My story, I, I always like to call it... Um a story of resilience mm -hmm. um, and I've titled my story A Beautiful Mess which is quite ironic mm -hmm. um, but it's very close to me and I think 
Why people's stories always inspired me is that feeling of restoring hope. It's that feeling that you're not alone. And that's basically why I founded what I've, like the Mind Daba campaign. So my story starts off, um, okay, I'm just going <laughs> to read it to you and I hope Go everyone um, resonates with this. Okay. Challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Until 2017, my story was defined by torture, and I've always asked myself, why me? On the 14th of October, 2005, my life changed forever. As I walked through the doorways of my home, I could feel the silence in the air. The phone rang. I had shivers down my spine. As my granny answered the phone, tears then ran down her wrinkled face. No one wanted to tell me what happened. A few minutes later, my primary school teacher walked up to me and gently hugged me and said, I am so sorry, Payal. He's in a better place. I just received the most traumatic news. My dad was murdered. My hero was gone. Growing up without a dad is extremely difficult. I remember days when there was hardly anything to do. Packets of clothes of hand-down clothes and life went into slow motion and I realized he was gone. I was six years old. In September of 2007, my family was hijacked. You know that point when your entire body freezes and you don't know what to do. That's exactly what happened. Six, six inches from my face, silver coated. His hands were not even shaking as he had bloodshot red eyes and he held a gun as an eight-year-old girl. I never experienced that much of fear. I was ready to protect my family and I thought my life was going to end there. In 2011, I suffered with severe depression. I was on medication and went for counseling. High school was an emotional roller coaster. I was not the smartest. People told me I was going to fail and I should consider changing schools. Every time I gave my 100% in studies, I would receive a party. I felt so worthless and stupid. These alphabets were swapped and then I was diagnosed with dyslexia, which I still cannot spell. I was failing horribly and I had no meaning left. I then resorted to self-harm and I was ready to kill myself. I just wanted to stop hurting, but my body had other plans. I was sick and I was angry. In 2016, my, this was my senior year of school, I made it this far despite, despite tragedy. I was convinced this was going to be my year until my mom was really sick. Separated from my dad was ex exhausting. What was I going to do if anything happened to my mom? Throughout the year, she received medication and treatment, and I believed in God. However, I still felt this void in me, growing bigger and bigger. Halfway through that year, my sister and I met up in an accident, and I wrote my final year in a neck brace. I wrote those papers with more fear than faith. At most all this fear, there was a revolution. I had a breakthrough. Fear was not going to make decisions for me anymore. This needed to change. I began making decisions for myself. In January of 2017, I made a decision to start setting goals. I set three goals for myself. Firstly, spread happiness everywhere I go. Secondly, to slay. And third, and to do well academically so that I could study in the United States, which felt quite impossible because there were almost 700 to 800 students just in my class. And of course, the blessing of dyslexia. I would like to think I achieved my goals with regard to spreading happiness. My day is not made if I don't make someone smile. And as for slaying, I started taking care of myself, gaining that confidence to become a brand ambassador for a few companies in South Africa. I also began running and dancing to cope with the emotional trauma. I spent quality time with the people around me and through engagement, um, outreach engagements. Helping others was a way of helping myself too. And academically, I topped my class. I became one of the University of Johannesburg's top achievers in 2017. I made Dean's List in 2018, and I've received a golden key. This was not done by ado without adopting a mind of a matter or outlook. Equally important, I've accepted that I would simply have to put in more hours than everybody else. My dyslexia would slow me down, but it would not stop me. I realized we don't develop courage by being happy every day. We develop it by surviving the difficult times and challenging adversity. I was awarded the opportunity to study in America in 2018, where I had studied for six months. Over here, it, 
I went, I pushed my limits and I traveled through to New York, Boston, Washington, LA and Vegas. A process of true self-introspection happened when I started understanding myself. I would like to mention that my problems did not disappear and I would obviously experience more problems in the future. Life gets more and more interesting, but I'm braver than I once believed. You are braver than you once believed, and you are smarter than you seem, and you're more loved than you even know. Wow, what a story, man. Thank you for sharing that. I hope it's inspired uh, many of you listening to us or watching us on uh, social media right now. Payal, thank you for sharing that story. I know it's not easy. We're going to be taking a short break. A song dedicated to you. It's Destiny's Child, an Independent Woman. You have done great. Super J, the weekend weekly. Why don't you beg me, baby? Why don't you beg me? Lens FM 936, your station, your music. The weekend wiggle with Super J on a Saturday afternoon. Crystal Waters making happy. Yes, we're trying to get you to be happy, not in a depressed state. And uh, to help us with that, we have a uh, Pyle Mirage uh, sharing her story and uh, and giving us some. Uh, tips on how, how we can manage that. So Payal, you shared your story before the break. It must have been difficult for you to open up uh, the first time you shared your story. So what were the emotions you were going through and how did you overcome it? It was extremely difficult. Um, you know, we live in a very, um, I want to say close-minded society, but that's not really the word. Um, I felt like I was going to be judged. I felt that I was going to be um, made fun of. Uh, for being dramatic. I also felt that um, people might not think that it's true um, and that I was just trying to seek attention, which was not the case. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I came across this beautiful TED talk by Brene Brown where she spoke about being vulnerable and the power of vulnerability. Um, and I'd like to share that in that vulnerability is not a weakness. Um, in fact, it's the center of joy, belonging and love. Um, vulnerability is the birthplace for innovation, creativity, and change. And I think when I shared my story, I realized that this is what I'm going through. What are other people going through? Mm -hmm. You know, in the sense that... Um, they and, they and they're keeping quiet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if I just... And I got, like, the feedback that I got was just overwhelming. It was so positive. And it was like, th so many people related to different parts of my story. And, and that was something I wanted to highlight because you see they've been through it. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they, maybe they spoke about it, mm -hmm. but they chose to uh, uh, relate to me. Mm -hmm. And for me, that went a long way. And I think um, there's a Japanese term called ikigai, which is the reason of being. Like I was saying, um, my ikigai would be my purpose or my reason of being is to try and break the stigma attached to mental health. I mean, we all it's to the world to make some sort of difference. I mean, we can't sit there and expect change to happen if we don't try and change. And that's why I decided to share my story. Um, and there needs to be more activism towards it. I mean, like like I said, there's social media where we can, sp we can spread more awareness, that type of thing. So yeah, it was very difficult. And I dealt with it through the support that I received from everyone. And I adapted a mindset of courage over comfort. Uh -huh. And that really did take me a long way. <laughs> All right, yeah, get out of your comfort zone, eh? Yep, get yeah. comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. So now you have a platform for others to share their stories. Can you tell us more about this and how it all started? Okay, so basically, I founded an organization called Mindaba. Mindaba is translated to my story for, from Zulu. Um, so the inspiration for this campaign came from Michelle Obama, where she speaks about in her book, Becoming, that we focus too much on statistics and not on stories. And stories give you a perspective of what's, what people are going through and how they're feeling. Um, with that in mind, we had to create, uh, part of my honors um, degree was to create a, a change project based on the UN Sustainability Goal. So I picked goal number three, which is good health and well-being. Um, I took this more personally than just an assignment to chase and, you know, marks and stuff like that, because I think that within the community of Lanasia, change needs to happen towards mental health. So Mind Daba is committed to getting people to own their stories. We believe that everyone has a story to tell. We create trust bonding and generosity, ultimately releasing the hormone of oxytocin and re restoring hope. Stories are what, what our lives are made out of and we remember how people 
feel and that's what takes us a long way. We cannot always choose the stories that we have in our life, but we can take the risk and show that we are human and vulnerable. I think Mind Daba is passionate about bringing the world closer one story at a time. And yeah, I think the aim for this was to have a zero rand budget. So create change without any money because mm -hmm. people think that, okay, money, you know, you it's need money to do me. this. Yeah. And that was not what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, are there th times when people don't even know that, I go that they are going through depression? So uh, what symptoms should they look out for? Like I mentioned, I'm not a medical mm -hmm. profession, but mm -hmm. this is just some research that I've conducted and I've spoken to an um, intuitive practitioner about it. So this is her advice. So from a physical level, you tend to sleep a lot. Um, you tend to want to escape. You want to stop thinking so much. Um, and you just want peace. You know, you know, you tend to take longer showers or you find every excuse to sleep or you just feel... Or really not go out. Exactly, mm -hmm. and not go out. Mm -hmm. um, one doesn't smile often, and I found this <laughs> one quite interesting. <laughs> but, and now we're hidden with masks, so yeah. <laughs> it's even yeah, worse. True. Um, and you're hiding that happiness in you. And then that has a ripple effect because, say, for example, if you're at home and then you're not feeling happy, you don't want to smile, you make everyone around you uncomfortable. You know, they'll be like, what's wrong with this one? Like, she's going to have moods again mm -hmm. or, you know, that type of thing. Um, it's also a lack of self-care where you stop realizing how you look and you don't take any sort of um, pride in the way you carry yourself. Maybe it's um, you don't tend to look in the mirror as often as you would like to or, you know, maybe wear your favorite top or something something to that extent uh, a major one is we blame shift we tend to blame either the parents or a friends or family or something in that extent in the sense that we tend to judge the world then this does have more of a deeper effect of why are you feeling this way um and the other one is we find excuses for something and that bring ourselves down so we always think oh no i should have done this i should have why done that. Me? Exactly, mm -hmm. we constantly ask ourselves why you then yeah. that that feeling relates to a very shallow feeling where you don't want to talk about it. And yeah, that's just some of the um, symptoms that I picked up. So uh, how can you help a friend, a family member or a colleague that is going through depression? Um, I read a very interesting story and it just came to my mind where um, it was about someone that was about to commit suicide and he he just said in his um, in his motivational speech that if someone just looked at him when he was about to jump off that bridge and just smiled at him or just um, greeted him or you know something he would have not jumped off that mm -hmm, bridge mm -hmm. because he would have had that hope. feel included yes mm -hmm. and I think as humans we just want to have that sense of belonging mm -hmm. that sense of connectivity with the people around us with mm -hmm. you know with even strangers for that instance and how do we help someone and I think it starts with very small you can't help someone if you can't help yourself mm -hmm. um, with that in mind to find to give provide help to someone um, find a trusted person where you know they they won't go around and tell other people about you in the sense that like you've confided in them maybe you know them for a long time maybe they have been through it before and you just like to seek their advice that type of thing um, and you know that ex expression without being judged when you I mean I think ultimately there is professional help Mm -hmm. um, there are people within our community, I like I've mentioned, the South African Anxiety and Depression Group, which I've worked with before, and they're really nice people. And we need to have more meaningful conversations. And I think this is for me, not just saying, hello, how are you? Asking that, how was your day? What stood out for you today? Um, what made you wear, I don't know, a great top today, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's that the deeper connection where, you know, the hello, how are you? is just being like, okay, it's generic now. And, and don't you think that social media is making it worse? It's like 5,000 friends or followers. It's, it's false people. Definitely. And mm -hmm. I cannot relate more to that statement. Uh -huh. I mean, like you mentioned, um, Shran Rajput. And he's had, I think, millions of followers, but mm -hmm. he was alone. Yeah. And for me, and as a youth now, social media is like, we, we want to be liked, mm. you know, with that double tap button. Yeah. You want to have that feeling of acceptance. Yeah. But it's not going to happen if you don't accept yourself yeah. first. And also the ach shame, like you mentioned, and the sorry, it's not from the heart. But if we face to face and I say sorry, you can see my emotions. Yes. But seeing it on your screen, uh, it's that a different empathy. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think social media has played, it's played a big role in the sense that, yes, it's brought the world together. Mm -hmm. But it's also divided us mm -hmm. in the sense that we don't have that 
that ability to connect deeper with people, mm. to have these conversations, to, you know, for you to have that feeling like, okay, I've learned something from someone. I've learned something that I didn't know yesterday. And for me, that's why my passion, <laughs> and I'm sure you can hear it, mm, yeah, has good. come <laughs> from, <laughs> from this. So, yeah. And uh, the, the youth, what's your message for them? I mean, th- you know, the, the thing is, uh, there's a lot of suicides and depression ha- happening among the youth. What do you think, uh, that's what's causing that and how can we fix that? Okay. Um, in my opinion, suicidal thoughts just does not happen like that. Like you just um, don't wake up and feel like, okay, today I might want to take my life. Mm. It's a build up. It's a build up of um, disappointment, rejection, um, a lack of love, that, that feeling of being, like I've said, that disconnected, um, that you're not valued in the community mm. or in your family for that instance. And then that leads to depression. Mm-hmm. And then after that, that's when you start getting suicidal thoughts because you feel like, what, what's my point the in The distrust, they lost their whole world, especially on yeah. Valentine's Day when the boyfriend, girlfriend, when oh they God. break <laughs> up, that, that is yes. one crazy thing. Yes, that, that's very true. Mm. And I think that you can't just... You, you're in this mental torture. It's like it's a constant cycle of what's the point of me being here? And mm-hmm. then you need these are some of the tools that can build the foundation to change that. So, firstly, um, reflect daily. Um, this is probably through meditation as well, and have a guided meditation. Find a mentor in the sense that there's a lot of things available. I mean, YouTube is a wonderful platform for you to even get some exercise videos done or anything like that. The second one is self love. Um, Pull out 15 seconds, um, 15 seconds, 15 minutes of your day. And I think that we need to be a bit more selfish for our time. We tend to want to do everything for everybody. We want to be there. We want to do all this. And I'm kind of guilty of this Some as me well. Time. <laughs> yeah. So it's just 15 minutes that mm-hmm. you take for yourself. And if you practice this for 21 days, it then becomes a habit. So it's ingrained. So I've, for me, I've now started doing like a, like a short writing every night of five minutes of just writing how my day was Mm -hmm. and I started that on the 1st of January and now I've got almost half a book done of basically the half of the year so for me that was one of the things that I wanted to change because I felt like my head was just all over the place Um, and then like you just you need to just we only realize the importance of our mental health once we've hit rock bottom and that also needs to change I think challenges um, happen can happen at any time so what this will do is basically build your foundation of how to resolve that energy for when something happens because I mean anything can happen at any time and also that that courage to change um, that builds on your resilience as well there's there is light at the end of the tunnel and mm-hmm. I think that's something that we need to remember so a beautiful quote or a message that I read was SOS mm-hmm. in the sense that stand back observe your thoughts and surround yourself with people that have positive vibrations of you that's the SOS wow. so yeah so uh, we're going to have another sh- uh, music break now and uh, this is also a type of advice it's given by Baz Luhrmann The song is called Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen. So uh, take a listen to this and let me know your thoughts on that. We're chatting to Payal Mirage after this. Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 99, wear sunscreen. DJ Super J, the weekend we go. Lens FM 936, your station, your music, Michael Jackson. You are not alone. Yes, you're not. You have me, you have Pile Mirage, and uh, some organizations that can help you if you are suffering with any mental uh, illness. So, come on. We're going to be sharing those details shortly. But first, uh, let's chat more to Pile Mirage and her platform called My Indab- Indaba. So, Pile, tell us, what's the aim of uh, this platform? The aim for for me was basically to create a platform that's a safe place for people to express their stories. Um, It's 
whether it can be anything that stands out for you in your life. I mean, we've reached about 50 stories that have come in already and I mm-hmm. honestly only targeted for like 25 wow. people okay. because I know it's it's very difficult to create that sense of trust. And um, let's hope it's going to grow more after today. I hope so. I really do hope <laughs> okay. so. So, like I said, it's the go-to platform but on the platform, I've got everybody's stories and now I'm like, okay, but now what about their stories? So that's when I decided to create um, and do collaborations with uh, many other people. So for example, I did a collaboration with Bubble Off the Box where we spoke about gender-based violence and how that impacts people's health and how do you speak to, um, I don't want to say victims, they're more survivors. We did then a live with mental health in a classroom and how that impacted um, bullying and how do children cope with that. So that was very interesting. I think that was one of the lives that reached the most views. So these lives are basically scheduled at um, in the week for people to just gain that insight that they might not have. And we've got an international life plan, actually two. So I've uh, collaborated with someone in London mm-hmm. um, about interracial couples. So how that how does that impact the family's mental health and how did they go deal with that? Something very different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what I wanted. I wanted to do something that was uncomfortable that no one really speaks about. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and we also did a live. We're gonna do a live about it from someone in the United States and how his perspective of living without. Um, belonging because he's not from the country he's from <laughs> he's from Ghana okay and he's studying in the United States and how that impacted him being a de- de- detached from his family and stuff like that so we basically do have um, videos on what you can you can go through it yourself uh, listen to the videos maybe take maybe those 15 minutes that we spoke about um, to, to go through them so we spoke about how to um, how to stop complaining <laughs> we tend to complain a lot about this the food prices the petrol prices this that that how to stop that how to stop saying I don't know um, you know, I'm guilty of that, mm-hmm. and I think I need to change that. There's right? Many others. <laughs> <laughs> we we spoke about how to s- uh, a tip or like a survival kit to go through if you go if you're having suicidal thoughts. How do you create a password for your mind? Like you know, people tend to say so many things for you, to you that words like people don't realize the words have a very big impact on on you. And how do we create that that password um, to set that boundary? Um, off your mind. So it's just normal videos that I've come up with from different people that I've brought together. I've got actually a nice one planned with one of the Miss Essay finalists um, and her perspective on how mental health and how that was so overwhelming. So it's a variety of um, different uh, walks of life that I've mm-hmm. brought together. And yeah, I want to create a generation that understands the importance of mental health and that are willing to break the stigma of weight and that is done through storytelling so we've got stories from different walks of life like i said we've got one from addicts and how they recovered with drugs we've got one from lawyers or people that have had miscarriages um from in my case my story so i shared my story to create that that trust to create that way of comfort within me and the, the next person um and like i said ultimately reaching or ex- uh, releasing that hormone of oxytocin where you resonate with me now mm-hmm. and you feel a, a lot better uh-huh. uh, and I that's my intention for this campaign it's purely to inspire it's to educate it's to create awareness and the awareness is measured through the engagement that I get so okay. yeah so there's a man on the street that wants to share his story with you what must he do so I have um, the Instagram page. I'm going to la- launch it on Facebook as well. The platform is called at Mindaba. I do have an email address that they could share their story with me. Um, it's mindaba123 at gmail.com. Um, we can put that on social media as well. So if people need to reach me, they can. And I do have my number out there. I think I just want people to see that I'm committed to breaking the stigma because it's something that stands out for me. And and like I said, if there's something I want people to take out from me, if that you don't might not want to share your story with me completely as yet, mm-hmm. but I want you to take out something that resonates from you. I mean, we spoke for a while now. If there's something that I said from being vulnerable, from you know creating that change in yourself, if it's not just um, setting that foundation of how you deal with yourself, just something that for me would go a long way. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome stuff. So a uh, final one from you, Payal Maharaj. Uh, we want to know what's your message to the public with regarding mental illness? Um, I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people are. We all have mm. our flaws. Yeah, correct. And we should embrace that because there's nothing wrong with that. For me, it's the getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like I said, courage um, um, over fear, that type of thing. And more importantly, is be kind to yourself. 
Be kind to the people you're around. Mind Daba is created for that. It's for you to have that sense of hope. Um, also, I feel like this is a tough time for all of us with this global pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're uncertain. There's a lot of uncertainty. People are scared. People are worried about losing loved ones. And it's come to the stage now where we all know of someone that mm-hmm. probably has contracted Correct. the virus. And I just want to say that you are not alone, <laughs> literally, as the song goes. Yeah. You are not alone. And uh, my final thing is um, let's embrace the imperfect, the crazy, the sad, the broken. Let's smile deep into others' eyes. Masks don't hide that positive feeling of caring. Awesome. Okay. Any final words from you? Um, thank you <laughs> <laughs> for having me on this platform. I hope I impacted people. Uh, please don't be afraid to reach out. Um, if it's not to me, there is, like I've said, I'm not a medical profession to mm-hmm. give that type I'm of gonna advice. I'm going to share some more. Um, I, I just, like I said, my Java is created for you and for everyone else. Um, it's not going to be easy, but I will always say this and I will say it again. You are not alone. The stigma needs to change. Conversations need to happen. Um, and yeah. Now you know why <laughs> I chose it, Somi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, from my side, I must say, yeah, thank you for sharing your story. Coming on board uh, on the Weekend Wiggle Lens FM 936. It's been a pleasure to have you. I'm honored. And, uh, and I wish uh, you many success with this. And I know you're going to be helping a lot of people out there. So if you are looking for some help, Payal Mirage is here. Like she said, she's not a medical expert, but she can always guide you. Uh, if you need to get hold of her, you can uh, get her on Instagram at myindaba or you can email her myindaba123 at gmail.com. Uh, you can also get some help from the South African Depression and, and the Anxiety Group. Uh, you can go to the website www.zadag.org Z-A-D-A-G. Dot org or uh, contact a counselor between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday to Sunday. Uh, you can call them on 011 234 4837. That's 011 234 4837. And for any suicidal emergencies, you may contact on 0800 567 567. That number once again, 0800 567 567. And uh, the SADAC 24 hour helpline, 0800 456 789. 0800 456 789. So, Paya Mirage, we're going to be playing one of your favorite songs. Uh, it's called uh, Balam Pichikari. Tell us why. <laughs> it's I don't know. It's just always been one of my favorite songs. I think it's just that it gives you that feeling of okay, I can get up and dance, and I could be so sad. I could be feeling so overwhelmed, and I just put on this movie or the song, and I'm I'm a dancer as well. So uh-huh. my sister and I. Um, so we're gonna see some of that now. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh well, maybe. <laughs> but we we always been, and my mom's a dancer as well. Mm-hmm. So we've always been exposed to this, and I've been a very uh, we've played a very big role in the community, part of the Nation Yevak Mundo. And you know, dance has always been a big part of our life. Um, and I, I just love it. It just gives me that feeling of you know what. Your problems are not going to get solved right now, but at this point, just enjoy it. And music is the one thing that it can yeah, take that uh, sad moments <laughs> away. Hey, so uh, keep on listening to Lens FM 936. Thank you once again for your time. We're going to be playing out with shares uh, strong enough and then get into your song while you get your dancing outfit ready. <laughs> hey? All right. Thank you so so much. Uh, everyone tuning in uh, to us on Facebook and uh, other social media platforms, as well as Lens FM 936, audio streaming through your side of the world on Triple www.lensfm.co.za I hope that we have made a difference to your life and made you feel that you have some help. You're sure making you feel strong enough. There's nothing you can say or do for me And I don't want a miracle You'll never change for no one Thank you for partying with DJ Super J. Can we go? With the hottest DJ. Hey. 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 Hey.